16. Religion and the State. Calcedon Report number 152, April 1978. One of the key points of confusion in the modern mind, an error doing great damage to the cause of Christ, is the failure to distinguish between the separation of church and state and the separation of religion and state. Church and state can be separated. They are two different institutions. They can be subordinate one to another, interdependent or separate, or, in the case of anti-Christian states, the church can be denied a legal existence. Religion and the state is another matter entirely. It is impossible to separate the two, and the idea of a non-religious or religiously neutral state is a myth, and a very dangerous myth. A state cannot exist without laws, and all laws are expressions of one or another religious faith. Laws are enacted morality, and procedures for the enforcement of that morality. Laws and morality in general are expressions of religion, of ultimate concern, of a faith in what constitutes true and ultimate order. Every legal system is inescapably an establishment of religion. There can thus be no separation of religion and the state. The important question is this. Since every state or civil government is an establishment of religion, what will the religion of the state be? The laws of all civil governments represent a doctrine of religious order, a faith in moral government and truth. If a state is not Christian, it will be an expression of humanistic, Buddhist, Islamic, Shinto, Hindu, or some other religious system of order, morality or law. To talk thus of the separation of religion and the state is clearly wrong. It is impossible. People who indulge in such talk are, first, clearly ignorant of the basic facts of the matter and the nature of law. Second, if they are not ignorant, they are then working quietly to supplant one kind of religion with another, to replace one doctrine of law and morality with another doctrine derived from an alien religion. One of the problems of Western history has long been the mixture of conflicting laws and religions in its political order. The Christian foundations of law have had many admixtures of ancient forms of pagan law. Now, more than ever before, the pagan element is militant and is self-conscious in its desire to purge civil governments of all traces of Christian law and morality. Humanism the religion of man, seeks to destroy Christian doctrines of law in favour of humanistic doctrines. Humanism is increasingly the religion of our laws and of our courts. It is clearly the established religion in all state schools, from kindergarten through the university. The triumph of humanism will mean the suppression and persecution of Christianity. Signs are not lacking that this is already in progress. No Christian can be indifferent to this struggle and retain the name and blessing of the Lord. Either Christianity becomes the source of law, or humanism will be. The humanists are right in seeing the need for a religiously consistent system of laws. All law is an expression of a religious faith. Before this century is over, it will be apparent whether churchmen are humanists or Christians. This is a time for decision. Just as there can be no separation of religion and the state, so there can be no evasion of the necessity to stand. The challenge of Elijah is again before us. How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. 1 Kings chapter 18 verse 21.